Whoa, we're going to Real Madrid. Whoa. Incoming oh. message. Here we go, Real Madrid interview unsuccessful. <sighs> sometimes you're a fire, sometimes you're a ghost, sometimes you can give me all the things that I love the most. Sometimes you're a queen, sometimes you're a curse, and sometimes a whole lot worse. Yeah, nobody's quite, nobody's quite like you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode number 37 of Blue Hell Worldwide here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well. And in today's episode, we have got a Super League Cup round of 64 game against Sevilla and a league game against Palmeiras right before the start of the January transfer window in this third season here at Sporting Kansas City. So if you're looking forward to that, then do remember to pop on down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already, also consider hitting that subscribe button, turning that notification bell on as well, all that good YouTube algorithm stuff. But we start today's episode off a little bit of a downer, as I said yesterday, we probably weren't going to take this job if it was offered to us unless we had a little bit of time left at the end of the season here at Sporting Kansas City. We might have came back to this and maybe done a half season at Real Madrid if we had time, but now it is not going to be an option because unfortunately we did not get the job. Real Madrid ended up favouring Thomas Janisic, who, if we have a quick look at him, was the interim manager of Gymnastic de Tarragona who are a club down in sixth in La Liga 2. So that's a little bit annoying now that I've looked at that because that's a full division below us. So we got beaten to someone from lower than where we were, which is interesting. Real Madrid going for him over us. But either way, it doesn't make too much difference because we're probably just going to finish the season off here at Sporting Kansas City, see if we can somehow get ourselves up to the Premier League and we might leave it at that unless we have a little bit of time during the FM22 cycle to come back to this, but unfortunately no Real Madrid here for us. But we have played quite a few games since the end of yesterday's episode, which if you missed, I will leave a link to that above my head in the top right corner. Five Serie A league games followed by a couple of Europa League group games. First off, it was a league game away from home against Tigres, and just after the restart, we did open the scoring. Felipe Anderson trying to clear the ball there, but doing it very badly. Busio to Mecha to Polito, good finish until a bottom left corner, and we did go 1-0 up, but that lead did not last long, and only 10 minutes later, a throw in there to Tigres Pablo, back to Lopez, and somehow Felipe Anderson's left open there at the far post, and they grab an equaliser, won all the game that we thoroughly dominated, but did not get a result from, so a frustrating draw there against Tigres, despite it being away from home. And off the back of that, we took on table-topping LAFC, and this was a nil all draw again away from home, this one, a lot happier with because we were outplayed quite comprehensively, didn't really do much up front, that's an area that we have looked to address in our last couple of games, we'll get to that soon, but a little draw against top of the table, another draw, starting to get frustrating the amount of draws that we are having, but as I said, away at top of the table, not too bad of a result there, and off the back of that we finally broke the sequence of draws with a 1-0 win against Valleys. we won't bother showing you guys the highlights of this one because it was a red card in the 11th minute, and then they gave away a penalty at the 37 minute mark, Rashid Gazelle tucking that away, so a game where not a heck of a lot happened, obviously the one man advantage did help us, stats wise, really should have been winning that game by more, but we will take the three points considering the amount of draws we have had recently, especially away from home, and then we faced an away trip to Boca Juniors, the team that did win this division in the first year of this World Super League save, but they did struggled the year after after not winning their promotion playoff and we ended up having a tough day at the office here at the half hour mark Ellis who had a really good game made his way down the left hand side his shot blocked but it ends up falling quite nicely there to Diop tucks it away and they were 1-0 up at half time but after that a poor clearance there from Unsane Kolaka on the ball slots Ellis for and beats him at the near post not a good few minutes there for Unsane who has had a good season 2-0 down after 50 minutes and then with 12 minutes to go they made it 3-0 Zavaios going forward, ball over the top for Allison yet again, Unsane getting beaten at his near post, but he didn't play very well in this game, as you could tell by those highlights. 3-0 loss, pretty poor day at the office, as I said, and one to try and flush the dunny and move on from. But off the back of that game, we did make a slight tactical adjustment, which I'll show you guys heading into the Sevilla game, and it did slightly pay off here 
in this home game against Internacional. Nothing happening inside the first hour, but we did look quite threatening without any reward. But finally, at the 62-minute mark, really nice ball over the top there from Rashid Gazal and Felix Metcher is there at the far post to tuck it away, and we get a 1-0 win to bounce back from that Boca Juniors defeat. As you can tell by the stats, it was a game that we potentially should have got another goal from based on the highlights that I saw. We definitely should have, but in the end, three points at home with the stadium still under construction that should be finished in time for the second game of today's episode, but good to get another three points in the bank for the league. And then we were back into the Europa League for our last few games. We still had a shot at potentially getting out of this group, but we needed results to go in our favour and to win both of our games that we did have left in the first of those was a very tough one against today's opposition in the Super League Cup in Sevilla. The reserve team playing these two games coming up and they did not perform well at all in this one. 11 minutes gone, Sevilla knocking the ball about very nicely inside the final third. Somehow Ocampos gets a shot off there past the defender, goes into the top of the right corner and they are 1-0 up early and then only a minute later, Manquillo slots Wintzheimer through and they go 2-0 up very early on and it did not improve from there just before half time three minutes added on they get a corner wind timer over to Ocampos and they go into the sheds 3-0 up and then five minutes after the restart Zobnin to Mankio puts the ball in and Wintzheimer just gets his head on that from a just onside position to make it 4-0 and then with four minutes to go knocking the ball quite nicely in the final third again and then Gomez with a little bit of help from the woodwork makes it 5-0 a very bad day at the office. I think that's one of our heaviest defeats that we've had here at Sporting Kansas City so far in the save. Obviously, apart from that second leg of the Champions League qualifying earlier this season against Eintracht Frankfurt. Stats-wise, it was a game that we did actually offer quite a bit in. The scoreline doesn't suggest quite how even that game was, but we just didn't do enough with our chances and they took theirs very clinically. So a heavy defeat for us there against Sevilla, which ended our qualification chances out of the Europa League. And then our last Europa League group game against Lens. This one had nothing riding on it at all, but we got off to a good start in this one after the 10-minute mark. Franco up to Louis Martins down the left-hand side, puts the ball in for Walter. He tries to have a shot. It's deflected, falls very kindly to Daniel Shalloway, and he got his first goal of the season there to make it 1-0. But a few minutes later, Melia with a poor clearance. Kilnuendo is able to play through Ganango and make it one all after 18 minutes. And from the lens, really start to get a bit of momentum in this game. 32 minutes gone, a corner towards the far post. Balde over to Briseno, and he puts it away to make it 2-1. And then at the 50-minute mark, just after halftime, it was 3-1 to lens. Ball over the top there to Kalmuendo, and he just sends Melia completely the wrong way there. And they are 3-1 up. That pretty much sealed things. But with four minutes to go, we did grab a goal back. Johnny F and Russell at the far post. Felix Metcher yet again in a really good goal scoring touch at the moment, but we suffer a 3 2 defeat in our last Europa League game of this season. And it was a pretty disappointing one, truth be told. I think we actually played poorer in that game than we did in the 5 0 loss to Sevilla, despite what the scoreline would suggest. Pretty even game, but they were more clinical with their chances. So we are out of the Europa League. No point showing you guys what happened in that competition. In terms of the league, though, where we sit at the moment, we are still. And ninth, just inside that top half of the table, a couple of wins, a couple of losses, a couple of draws, pretty much just balancing things out pretty nicely. 24 points, 10 points behind LAFC now with a game in hand. Of course, we've got Palmeiras coming up there on the same amount of games as us. Seven points ahead of us, but just keeping ourselves pretty much in mid-table purgatory at the moment. But we have made a very slight change to the tech that we might make a few more depending on what happens in the games in today's episode and how certain players perform. I'm looking at the advanced playmaker role. Maybe that's something that we do need to change. But the change that I have made is in possession what we were at with this tactic for the entirety of this save and throughout the hexagon challenge as well as our attacking width was fairly narrow. I've just upped that to go fairly wide and we do look a lot more threatening on the attack. And I think that's been shown in the last couple of games since we had all those draws. We are conceding a few more goals and losing a few more games at the moment, but they are in the Europa League compared to the league, so hopefully it's going to balance itself out soon when we take on opposition who are more similar to ourselves. And we are looking a bit more threatening attacking-wise, so it'll be interesting to see what impact that has here today as our first 11 takes on Sevilla, followed by Palmeiras 
in the league and going into today's games as well. Unfortunately, in one of those past games, just after he got his first goal of the season, Daniel Shalloy twisted his ankle. He has gone for 12 days to three weeks, which means Aussie Cisnados comes into the first team for him. But first off today, we are going to try and beat Sevilla for the first time this season. They did us pretty well in both games in the Europa League, although I'm pretty sure the home tie was pretty tight. I think it was a 2-1 loss with the reserve team. So hopefully, with the first 11 at home, we could potentially get a better result here and try and make our way through to the round of 32 in the Super League Cup. But it is going to be tough for us against the La Liga leaders. Let's see if we can get an upset result here at Children's Mercy Park. And we do have TV coverage for this game. As I said, our first 11 as strong as we can have it at the moment. The only change from what we had in yesterday's episode, Cisnados coming in for Shelley on the bench. And there is Sevilla, a 4-2-3-1. And Brian Gill is finally going to play a game against us of potentially some future scouting for our Tottenham beta series here on the channel. But Sevilla in the red, we're in the light blue. And let's see if we can upset them here in the Super League Cup. Seven minutes gone, it's an early front here for Sevilla in the snow at Children's Mercy Park. These renovations will be finished by the time the next game starts against Palmeiras. But speak of the man, Brian Gill, the first time he's played against us this season, despite us having played these guys quite a few times for the Europa League, and he gives them a 1-0 lead very early on. A simple play from the throw and ball in there from Zobnin to Brian Gill, just given a little bit of space, and he makes the most of it putting away in the top left corner, and we go 1-0 down early. 12 minutes gone, it's a corner to us here. We try and find Buretuf, but the ball is cleared back out, but we might get something else going here as Ola Sunday is on the ball. The pass across, it will find a Yongo. Looked like a pretty dodgy one potentially there for a second, but we do keep position and hopefully look to strike back fairly soon after conceding the opening goal here in our last game before those stadium renovations are completed, upping our capacity quite nicely and that's exactly what we needed in response nice ball there from Rashid Gazelle and Alan Polito running onto it nicely gets his 50th goal for the club Ola Sunday driving forward nicely to help set this up Rashid Gazelle nicely time run there from Polito as defender just dropping into the center there leaving him too open and puts that away nicely in the bottom right corner and after a quarter of an hour it's one all 18 minutes gone in Sevilla with a frown looking to get back in front and Brian Gill is able to keep possession there. Jalo with a good slide challenge, but they do get possession back in Ola Sunday with a bit of a agricultural clearance, giving the ball straight back to Sevilla. Again, Berg makes his way down the left-hand side, plays that back for Zobnin, and they hold the ball quite dangerously here inside the final third. Fulon making his way down the left, tries to put a ball across. Berg to Oscar. It's a good foot in there from Busio, but somehow Oscar is able to get a shot off, and it finds the bottom right corner and we are not back on equal terms for long. 2-1 now to Sevilla. Not that long after we grab an equaliser. I thought we did fairly well there. A block shot. And then Busio sort of gets a foot on it and then trips over the ball. And then Oscar's allowed to just get a shot off. It's a really good finish in the end and not much space. And we are back down a goal. 2-1 after 22 minutes. 29 minutes gone here. And it's a free kick to SKC as we look to get back all square in this game. A pretty entertaining First half so far, and we do get the ball up there. Polito, great chance, and he puts it wide. Really need to be taking that still 2-1 down after half an hour. And that is half time in this game. You look at the stats, we've actually been a better team despite what those highlights might have suggested. I feel like they were pretty clinical with their chances. We had a really good one, second one to Polito that he put wide. So feeling like this should be 2 all at half time, but we are certainly giving these guys a pretty good game. And if we can continue to play like this in the second half, we might be able to grab an equaliser. So despite being down, not too disappointed with how things are going. We'll see how these guys go for the rest of the second half. We do have to consider the Palmeiras game is only two days after this one. So as soon as players in this first 11 get down to yellow hearts, I'm probably going to be taking them off. So be prepared for a lot of substitutions during the second half. But hopefully the way we're playing, we can grab an equalising goal in the second half, 2-1 down. And time for the subs to start. Very early on in the second half, Felix Metcher down to a yellow heart. So Aussie Cisnados 
to come on for him. And shortly off the back of that substitution, a free kick here for Sevilla, and he finds the head of Castros, but puts it over the bar, and it is still 2-1. 57 minutes gone here, and we have a free kick after that good chance for Sevilla. Unsane not having the greatest game today, has to be said, being a bit sloppy from that free kick, nearly giving them an open net, but good work there from Cisneros for us to get the ball back, and he drives forwards, has a, has a shot, but it's pretty well over the bar, and still, after 57 minutes, it does remain 2-1 to Sevilla, and we are going to make a few more changes here due to Yellow Hearts. Gazelle is on a yellow, as is Matt Olasunde. So Jonas Leishoj can come on for Olasunde, and it'll be Johnny F. and Russell to come on for Rashid Gazelle. But with a half hour to go, we are still 2-1 down. Okay, 67 minutes gone here. During that last period of substitutions, we actually brought Franco on for Wintel and Chuck Busio into the advanced playmaker, but now Busio's tied to Remy Walker can come on for him. That's our five subs that we're allowed used in this competition for this game. 23 minutes to go, still 2-1 down. And shortly off the back of those substitutions, we do have a throw in inside the final third. Lyshoj, Walter Jala with a shot. Really good save there from Bono in goal. And I don't know where they'll be without him. That's a heck of a save to keep it at 2-1. And then Bjorta from the header, another good chance just over the bar. Creating some good chances, but not quite delivering on them. And then we're still 2-1 down. And now it's a free kick here to Severe in a very dangerous spot. Oscar to take it after nearly seeing up a goal from the free kick before. And this time that skims off the bar. So two good chances at both ends. The woodwork helping out either team 2-1 with 16 minutes to go. 89 minutes gone here. Five minutes of added time about to start. They have a throw which Zella deals with well. But Berg now looks to drive forward here. For Severe as they look to close this game out. Carlos will play that out. Not too sure who that was. Couldn't quite pick the name out with the snowy background. But he plays the ball up to Unsane. And hopefully we can get something going here on the counter attack. Luckily our defender didn't get in the way. Now that falls very kindly to Johnny Russell. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. What can he do? Doesn't quite have the pace to get past his man. Then Alan Polito with essentially an open net. Can't put it on target. We have given up some really good chances here. In the second half, just not quite being clinical enough attacking wise. We might look at that after the Palmeiras game and the second one of today's episode just to see what we're looking like in terms of XG and areas that we need to improve on going into this upcoming transfer window. I do feel like at the moment our attack is certainly leading us down, but Aussie Sidneros on a great run here and that comes off the post. What an individual goal that would have been from our young left midfielder, but just not quite on target enough and we enter the 95th minute and that will do it we gave Sevilla a really tough game there and we probably should have at least got a draw out of that you look at the stats we played really well so definitely showing some signs of improvement here now that we've gone a little bit wider attacking wise I feel like but they were very clinical with their pretty tight chances to be fair neither of them were overly clear cut compared to ours but they were very clinical with theirs we weren't quite clinical enough with ours and we will go out of the Super League Cup thanks to that 2-1 defeat to Sevilla and we'll come back shortly for the Palmeiras game. And we are back for this league game against Palmeiras, the team that did finish above us in the league last season and our team is exactly the same as it was to start off in the Sevilla game. The only difference from that game is our stadium has indeed now been expanded. We've gone up from a 17,000 capacity which would have been reduced while those renovations took place up to 26,000. So a significant increase in crowd for us here, and hopefully we can mark that with a good performance here in the league against Palmeiras. Okay, 19 minutes gone here, and we're going to make an early substitution. It's not quite a Mark Richardson bring out the ambulance injury, but Rashid Gazelle did pick up an early knock in his fitness. He hasn't quite improved as much as you'd like to see sometimes when players do pick up those little orange injury knock so he is going to come off after 19 minutes an early sub Johnny F and Russell will come on for him forced into an early substitution but still nil all after 20 minutes 25 minutes gone here it's a goal kick to Palmeiras in the green and white we are again in the light blue and that's a good cut out there from Sasha Jala Johnny F and Russell looks to make his way forward just holds the ball up here Jala that's a poor pass from him this time though to give the ball away and it's two round 
on the counter-attack. He was very dangerous the first time we played against these guys. 1-1 well, with the keeper. This time, Unsain with a good save. He's been pretty good for us this season as has Jala, and we keep it to nil all after 26 minutes. And that is half-time in this league game. It has been very quiet, not much separating either team. We've had more shots, but Palmeiras with the higher XG and the better chance with that one from Turan, which Unsay made a good save from. We're going to make another change here at half-time after we rev up the boys in the sheds, and that will be Felix Metcher going off on a yellow card and 6.3 rating Aussie Cisnodos to come on for him but still all to play for at nil all as we start the second half 49 minutes gone here and we have a throw in to start the highlights in the second half unfortunately giving the ball straight back to Palmeiras but they give it straight back to us now Bjortuft on the ball plays one four but it's cut out by De Paolo and now it's Danilo making his way forward up to Dudu it's a poor pass back there though Polito gets absolutely two-footed there from Gabriel Furtado that could be a big moment in the game, Palmeiras down to 10 men, and with 35 minutes to go, we have a man advantage still at nil all. Now we have a throw in, and hopefully we can make the most of that advantage. Ola Sunday on the ball, just holding things up. Wintle puts a ball in. It's a pretty bad one, though, straight at Passanato and goal. But hopefully now we can put some sustained pressure on Palmeiras thanks to that man advantage as they look to play out from the back. It looked a little hairy first things first, but they do clear it deep, albeit straight to. A Yongo now, Aussie Cisneros cutting inside, making his way out towards the right. Is going to keep on going. Has a shot, and it just goes wide. Wasn't overly threatening, to truth be told. And still nil all after 59 minutes. But another highlight starting here. So this could be a big turning point. That red card, that's a really lucky ball, I suppose, from Busio. And Aussie Cisneros gets his first goal of the season. He's looked pretty dangerous when he's come on in pretty much any game that we've used him so far this season. And we make the most. Of the man advantage. We had the free kick. Wintle was able to play this into Busio. It looked like a fairly safe ball, but the slide tackle just falls very kindly to where Cisneros was going. It sort of leaves the goalkeeper in no man's land, and we take our chance and go 1 0 up after 61 minutes. We'll make our last substitution here as well. Ryan Wintle on a 6.3 rating. I think I'm going to have to play around and change that role because no one seems to be playing well for us there. We might have to play with that. Heading into our next episode, Remy Walter to come on for him. That's our free subs, and hopefully we can keep making the most of this one-man advantage. 1-0 one up after 60 minutes. And shortly after that substitution here, it's a corner to Palmeiras, but we deal with it, and Johnny F. and Russell now starts to drive forward, and just has enough pace on his man there. Plays a the ball forward for Polito Russell. Ball for Cisneros. Oh, what a goal that would have been, but a really good save from Passanato to keep it at 1-0. 69 minutes gone, a nice time for a corner. We put into the mixer, and that is a very nice goal indeed. Gianluca Busio with another assist, and they were actually down to nine men too with that player off the field there, just to the left of goal, and we make the most of it. Sepp Vandenberg going on to that ball very nicely. Passanato coming out for it, and Vandenberg getting to the ball before he does, and we are now in a pretty safe spot here. 2-0 up with just under 20 minutes to go. And we are into injury time, quite deep into it too. We'll just make sure that Bjortuf doesn't get a second yellow card late here. But after that red card, that ended up being a pretty good performance from us. You can see how that did turn the game. Our XG really shot up from there. Busio with two assists. The first one, rather fortunate, but goals to Cisneros and Vandenberg. And we pick up a 2-0 win against Palmeiras, who were quite high in the tables so that's going to really help us going into this January window a little bit concerned about the advanced playmaker role as I said albeit Remy Walter did come off the bench and have a good little stint in there for Wintle but that red card really was the turning point in that game we look pretty good after that and pick up a 2-0 win in our first game at the expanded Children's Mercy Park against Palmeiras. So back in the inbox, we're just going to have a quick look at the squad before we get into this upcoming transfer window and just see what we potentially will look to be doing and what we might need to do in order to be bringing players in as well. So first off, we're going to have a look at the league table off the back of that win against Palmeiras. And we have shot up it just a little bit now, up to 27 points, still 10 points behind LAFC, but still with a game in hand, just establishing ourselves in that up half of the table a little bit more now than the bottom half of the table, which is nice to say going in towards the halfway point of the season but unfortunately as you saw earlier in that Palmeiras game Rashid Gazelle 
did go off early with a little bit of an injury and he is going to be out for the next week and it is a little bit of a busy week too. We've got Grimio coming up in the FA Cup 8th round so we'll probably come back for that game tomorrow and also bring you guys the start of the transfer window then see if any interesting stuff happens amongst our games in that episode but he's probably going to be missing all those games with a Bruce fly out for 5 to 8 days but before we bring you guys what's going to be coming up in tomorrow's episode there is going to be the start of the transfer window coming up very shortly so we'll just have a quick look at the squad and the stats going into that is it's pretty much going to be all or nothing now there's no point holding anything back for our last half season here at Sporting Kansas City so we'll go to the home page and just show you guys some of our team stats from here we are the best in terms of goals conceded so that's really good still quite happy with how we set up defensively but we are fourth worst in terms of goals scored with 17 that's really what's costing us so far this season if we go a bit deeper into the team stats and look at the detailed stats we'll make our way down to the attacking ones if we can once I find what I'm looking for and we look at the expected goals for we are up in eighth with 26 so we are definitely not performing as well as we could be in terms of the goals that we should be getting we are down in 16th equal for goals scored a lot higher than that with our xg so we definitely need to try and figure out something attacking wise I think we might have done that by just extending our attacking width for those last couple of games it does look to be helping but one thing that I might do is just have a play around with this advanced playmaker role and maybe see if there's a more suitable role something that suits the players at our disposal there so we can get a bit more out of that position Wintle on a 6.65 average rating 6.48 in his last couple of games and Remy Walter is a little bit better but not much and we've also got Jake Doyle Hayes in the reserves at the moment too who can cover that spot so we'll have a look at those guys just try and find a position that might complement what we do and go alongside that box-to-box -box midfield role that Busio and Franco are doing quite well in and see if something complements that better than the advanced playmaker going into the second half of the season but we'll have a quick look at our XG for the squad here because I think that's the main thing that we need to look at going into this transfer window and surprisingly Alan Polito is actually pretty much matching his XG. Rashid Gazelle slightly underperforming that right wing role just doesn't seem to work for us. I'm not too sure what it is, but the last couple of seasons, there's at least been one player underperforming in that right wing role. And Rashid Gazelle, despite taking penalties, is underperforming there. You look at Felix Metcher yet again outperforming his XG. He is proving to be quite important for us in terms of our attacking output. Anthony Reyes has had a big spell now without scoring a goal and his XG does reflect that 5 XG, 4 goals to next to his name. We keep going down. Daniel Shalloy, Gianluca Busio underperforming. Johnny Evan Russell's actually overperforming, so that's promising. Maybe we need to start giving him a little bit more first 11 football over Rashid Gazelle. We'll see how Gazelle gets on once he gets back from his injury and we make our way down and we start getting into some of the more defensive players the midfield players who you're not quite expecting as many goals from anyway but we are getting a decent return from Diego Colonado so that's good to see he's improving so if he can keep doing that he might get more first team football in the second half of the season especially with less cup competitions as well we're going to have to really rotate the team try and keep everyone happy and fresh but in terms of where I'm looking to improve in this upcoming window I think we need to have a look at the advanced playmaker role as I said whether that's changing the role seeing if these players start to improve and if that doesn't work then we might have to try and bring someone else in the other area I am going to try and improve up front because I don't think we're quite getting enough out of Polito and Reyes we might even look to move someone like Polito on because he is down to two and a half stars and it's the same rating as 17 year old Anthony Reyes so maybe we need to start relying a little bit more on Anthony Reyes but I think those are the two main areas and also the bench because it's pretty weak. It's not as important now that we've been knocked out of both the Europa League and the Super League Cup. We do still have the FA Cup, but for now, I'd like to keep our first 11 in that competition. But the longer it goes on, we're probably going to need to put more reserve players out throughout the rest of the season. Our bench doesn't seem to be performing as well as it was last season. And I think the area of most concern is our backup left back, all of them are really struggling so maybe it's time to try and move Louis Martins on and get someone a little bit better than two-star quality into the club at left back but if we are going to bring players in 
we are going to have to sell some players because if we look at our transfer budget, 870,000, we've got a number of free signings coming in who could improve in some areas, but they're more players for the future trying to set this club up for when we finish this save. 16k of wage budget left. It is not a very big transfer budget. We are going to need to try and sell some players if we are going to sign some more. So I think we're just going to have to see what happens in terms of what offers come in for certain players. We might also do a decent clean out of the reserves to try and raise some cash. And we'll also have a look at players who we could potentially bring in on loan to try and improve in those areas. Hopefully get someone good up front. Try and fix that midfield advanced playmaker area either for a role change or a new player, and also try and find a good backup left back a little bit better than Louis Martin. So that's what we're going to try and do in this upcoming transfer window, and you will see the start of that transfer window in the next episode. I think I'm going to bring this episode out to you guys on Sunday, and then we'll come back for the next episode of Blue Hill World right after that on Tuesday. Just try and get the gap between videos not being as big, as I don't think the YouTube algorithm likes that very much. So we'll try that this coming weekend, and we'll come back. For the FA Cup game, the eighth round game against divisional rivals Gremio, that should be a fairly winnable game for us. And we'll also bring you guys the Estudiantes League game as well. See if we can get a little march up the table going now that we are playing in front of an expanded capacity stadium at Children's Mercy Park. That might also be something which helps us out now that we've got more fans to cheer us on here at SKC. But that will do it for today's episode. If you did enjoy it, then do make sure to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you're new around here and enjoy the content and want to be informed when new videos do drop, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well, especially with Football Manager 2022, only a week and a half away now, I believe, so we're not too far away at all. But until we start the transfer window and take on Gremio in the FA Cup and Estudiantes in the league, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers. Sometimes it's a